Welcome back. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee, and our next guest is an educator, an artist, diversity consultant, and the anti-racist personal trainer of Black Issues Issues. She joins us today to discuss how she is shedding light on issues within the Black community. Please welcome, here she is, Kaneni. How are you, my girl? I'm doing so well, Bob. This is such a huge honor. Like, you're a pillar in Black media. Um, and so, I mean, I'm just thrilled to, to, you are a big Black issue, you know, in, <laughs> in the best way. Um, and I love the fact that you've been occupying this space and time to uplift Black people, give them new, new, new information about issues and also solutions. So the fact that I'm included in, in, in that journey um, that you are on, I'm extremely honored. Tell us about your, your production of Black Issues Issues and how you got involved in it and what you're doing in it now. Yeah, so Black Issues Issues started over two years ago. Uh, I was entered into a off-Broadway theater festival and I had all these characters kind of like Colored Museum. I love using uh, satire to heal the racial divide because, um, you know, uh, you laugh while you learn about um, racial inequality. Not to, not to make light of it, but just like having these conversations about race usually devolve into, I'm uncomfortable, oh my God, my feeling, you know, you know, again, you can collect all the white tears. Um, and so I was like, well, let, let me use humor, you know, so for 20 years, I've been doing off-Broadway and in and, and museums and, and galleries, like all kinds of art about race, but in ways that are like as serious as they are silly. Um, and so two years ago, I was like, okay, so I have all these characters. Well, how can I make all these characters make sense? Uh -huh. Right. Uh, so one of the characters I had was called signifying nothing. And so he would, he, he, his lines were only hashtags. Stay woke. Black lives matter. Hands up. Don't shoot. Because I was talking, I was basically saying that like, we have a whole generation of like internet activists, like they, that they think that everything, everything that needs to happen uh -huh. needs to happen on the internet. So like he literally only talks in hashtags and he only um, communicated through emojis. So I actually ordered this whole huge, um, like set of like emoji pillows. So he would yeah. go sad face if like somebody black died because of the cops, sad face. You know, he would, he would have like uh, the, uh, the hearts for like, you know, Huey P. Newton or Fred Hampton, like if just a black, you know, so it was just like heart, sad, you know, crying, you know, cause I yeah. think that to a certain degree, that's what we've been reduced to, especially on social media now. Like what power do we have other than, um, oh, you know, we share this information about this horrible shooting, this horrible video, look, 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 sad face, sad face. And this is like, yeah. what are we going to do about it? So I was, I was sitting at the, um, at a cafe with my director and collaborator, Aixa, and uh -huh. I saw this postcard, you know how like magazines have like these postcards that say like, oh, you know, if you subscribe in advance, you save like 33% off the cover price. And it yeah. was for Vanity Fair. And I said, well, I wonder, I wonder if what, I wonder if like Vanity Fair would ever have a black issue. And I was like, well, what would they call it? Well, they would call it the black issue. But I said, but black people have issues. Yeah. So it was going to be the black issues issue magazine where each issue of the black issue magazine was about a different black issue. So that, that was yeah. like the joke. And so then I was like, well, let's become the magazine editors. So we, so it was a play on Condé Nast. It was a play, a play on Vogue and Vanity Fair. And so I was like a uh, Reblaka Finch of Black Vanity Fair is, and Aisa was for Vogue, was for Vogue. And so we yeah. created this whole crazy like world where we acted like we were magazine editors and like, but we did not really understand. We were black, but we couldn't be black in Condé Nast and get to be Ed, you know, senior editors of Vogue or Vanity Fair. So then we became senior editors of this new magazine called The Black Issue, because that's how corporate America views Black people. It's like, you're expendable until you're useful. And so we forgot what it is to be Black because we couldn't be at Condé Nast and be Black. So here we are, the magazine editors for this Black magazine, because they're like, well, you're Black edited, but we didn't understand what it was to actually be Black. And so we have these fake British accents because we thought that that's what you need to do in order to work at Vanity Fair, right? You know? And so we were like, well, what's Blacks? Well, what, what are their issues, darlings? We don't even know. And so the yeah. whole show was a simulated focus group on what yeah. Black issues are. And so then the characters that I had all had their own issues. And so we, as the magazine editors, would say, oh, so is that a thing? The cops killing the blacks? That's an issue? Oh, well, maybe we'll do a cop killing 
black so c l b c k b right we, we, we do a c k b issue of the black issues magazine c, c cop killing black yes we do that right that, that, that was said so that became the joke and it's right. a joke within a joke and then because of the whole george floyd thing and then like black issues it's like whoa 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 and then um my character was supposed to be like a black version of anna wintour and so then when anna wintour really actually did get in trouble for not having enough diversity at vogue then i was like boom we done did this two years ago yeah you know i did it at um joe's pub uh right before COVID. You know, what, what would you like uh, people to learn or know more about with the black issues issues oh well i have a whole uh so i do a show on on because again we can't do theater anymore so i have a show on youtube uh if you just look up youtube black issues issues it's, it's on youtube it's on facebook live um where i do nightly shows where i talk about black issues and so i have what i call the blexicon uh so like mm -hmm. all these words that um white people insert themselves into everything that you know they, they they name their streets after them their institutions after themselves you know they you know they put they put themselves on the cover of our money you know but so i was like well what if what if i blackified the world and so every word i think about i'm like well what, what would the black version be so instead of agenda black agenda blood agenda what is our blood agenda right the votes coming up what, what, what is our blood agenda right yeah. um instead of tragedy blagedy because a tragedy is like, oh my God, oh my God, let's do something. 9-11 is a tragedy, right? But slavery and 400 years of racial oppression, that's a blagedy. It's, a blagedy. Not, it's not taken as seriously because it's a blagedy. It's not a tragedy, right? Mm -hmm. So blurgent, right? Black and urgent. It's not urgent. It was blurgent. And blurgent means you don't have to deploy as many resources. You don't have, there, here, here comes blurgent. Blurgent. There you go. <laughs> now, who so handed have, that to you? Hmm? Who handed that to you? That, this is Canadian. Canadian just went down because I was drinking tea <laughs> earlier. So this is this is my you know it's right here. So yeah, so I have a, a whole line of merchandise that people can can purchase and and it support you know yeah. and I, I think it like disrupts things like you're in a Zoom meeting and you just like drink some tea and you're like what what is that allergic you know it's like oh you know um, yeah and I have now, did you have this well, did you have this let me see your shirt again well this is the the original. Like, is your, logo. Is your, Mm -hmm. Now you had a uh, um, a watch party, right, for the debate? I did the blue agenda. Yes, <laughs> the blue agenda. Tell us yes. about it. What, what did you think? Yeah, so I used an Aunt Jemima bottle yeah. of syrup in my microphone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, because again, I wanted a racial revolution, and all I got is some Black Lives Matter mural and and yeah. and, and and the pseudo retiring of uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt Jemima. So I use an I use an Aunt Jemima bottle as like my yeah. microphone. And um, so I had Trump. You got one I, minute. Yep. Go I represented Trump as a flying pig. So when Trump would be like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of my taxes. Or when Trump <laughs> would say, you know, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really about the suburbs and, and law and order, keeping you safe. You know, so I used the flying pig yeah. to do that. It's really fun. And then, yeah. you know, sometimes we like to get on our high horse. Uh -huh. So I had the high horse and it makes a little sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I think that it is a, and I've been calling it the, the bleep show for a while. I know what that is. <laughs> so I would have the poop up to sit there and talk about all the poop that's happening. Uh -huh. And then I would have the crystal ball here to, for people to make predictions. Yes. About, you know, what's, what's next. Um, so yeah, like I have a lot of fun. And so then I also have um, Allie the ally here. So she's a white, she's a white ally. She's uh -huh. learning what it is to, to, to uh, love black people, love black history, love black culture. Cause I think that that is a key to being an ally that being an ally is more than, you know, the blagedy, you know, oh my God, black people are getting shot by the cops. It's like, no, black people are the arbiters of civilization. We're the first, we're the first teachers on this planet. Right. Uh -huh. Religion came from us. Uh, the first university came from us in Timbuktu. So if you're an ally, but you're only an ally conditionally based on police brutality. But then I tell you that the first university on the planet was Timbuktu and you don't want an African, you don't want to believe me in Mali, then yeah. what kind of al your allyship is conditioned upon black people being oppressed. Wow. This is great. Kanani, 
You yeah. need a whole hour because you, you can get into it. You can go. You think? <laughs> you think? I think because so. I'm all, I think so. I'm, Where can I'm we go? You about, got social media? Yeah, because I'm all about black uh, solutions. There you go. Any way you put it. Mm -hmm. Upside down, inside out, right you know, side up. Yeah. Work, work it out, Bob. You, you, you totally understand the deal. So my social media is bl literally Black Issues Issues on everything. BlackIssuesIssues.com, Black uh -huh. Issues Issues on Instagram, Black Issues Issues on YouTube. So again, I, I talk about my goal is to um, entertain, engage, inform, and inspire millions of people throughout the world and amplify both issues and solutions. So that's why this is a key pillar to uh, how I operate. Kanene, producer of Black Issues Issues, thank you so much. Remember, you have to exercise your mind, body, and spirit every day in preparation for life. We'll take a break right here. we got more open coming your way next. <laughs>